Perhaps all God is asking you to do today is try something. Friends, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Psalms, Psalm 91. You're encouraged to follow along however you choose, whether that's in your pew Bible, in your order of worship, or simply receiving the words as you hear them. However you choose to do that, let us listen now for God's word to us this morning. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings you will find refuge. Faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love Me I will deliver. I will protect those who know My name. When they call to Me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. Long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray together. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts and minds by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That as we have opened your scriptures before us now as we prepare our hearts to hear your word. We might hear with joy the words that you might speak to us this day. Things we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. There was a moment that I realized after I came to Bluff Park that this thing was going to work out. It was not the moment that I realized I got to work with the venerable Mike Holly or uh, Angela or Tom or Bart or Stanley or all the wonderful staff that we have, although they are worthy of veneration. It was not the moment that I realized that I would have the opportunity to preach in this magnificent sanctuary, although uh, its walls bring me closer to the presence of God each and every day. It was... Not even Lonnie in the choir who who bring me close and near to God's presence through music and song each Sunday uh, that I knew. It was the day that I walked in and realized the strong and long tradition of Bluff Park service with the Appalachia Service Project. Uh, ASP is a a non-profit home repair ministry in, in the region of Appalachia that our youth have been traveling to for many, many years, and it is a part of my life in a big, big way. My home church has, like yours, a strong tradition of service with ASB. My dad was the coordinator for our church for over 20 years, coordinating our groups going and coming. I served every year that I could in high school and even served on staff for a summer after my junior year of college. It's fair to say that the people of Appalachia and the work of emergency home repair got into my heart and into my life in a very profound and deep way. I love ASP and I miss going because I haven't been in a few years, but there is one particular instance that sticks out in terms of uh, my experience with ASP. And that experience came the summer before I was to be a senior in high school. My youth group traveled to the mountains of East Tennessee where each and every morning of that week we would load up our truck 
with lumber and tools and construction supplies, and we would wind our way up a mountain past houses that looked as if they were merely hanging on the side of a cliff. We would pass children playing on impossibly tight curves. We would uh, be welcomed into the holler by a billboard that assured us that, yes, indeed, we were entering the hometown of famed country music star Kenny Chesney. We, we would roll up to the house uh, of a homeowner, a sweet, faithful, saintly woman named Imogene. Imogene would greet us each morning and we would unload our tools and we would get started working on the house. There was only one problem, though. One, the first day that we were there doing our construction, doing our best to fix whatever the problem was, we took a break for lunch. We, and as we unloaded our sandwiches and coolers like you do, you pile up on the side of a pickup truck and begin to eat lunch together. All of a sudden, Miss Imogene, a woman of probably 75 years old, bursts out of her house off the front porch, begins to scold us relentlessly for eating lunch out in the heat. She frantically hurries us on her, on her porch into her dining room, gathers us around her table. On the way, as she continued to lecture us about the dangers of taking food in the heat, she gathered up cucumbers and tomatoes from her very own garden. Uh, as she told us why it was not good to do construction, uh, in that kind of weather, she washed the cucumbers and washed the tomatoes, sliced them up, and laid them before us on the table of harvest from her very own garden. And she very firmly instructed us to eat our fill of this wonderful produce that she had given to us. The bad thing about that week, even though it wasn't too bad, was that uh, the rains came as we tried to do construction. And the rains came about 1 o'clock on that first Monday of the week that we were to be doing home repair. And the rains came off and on and did not leave us even after we left. And what would normally happen was we would begin to feel the rain fall. The rain would, would come and disrupt our work. And, well, there again, Imogene would burst off of her front porch, shooing us inside, drying us off, handing us a glass of water giving us uh, instructions to sit down to take a rest because nobody should be fixing anybody's house while they're getting wet out in the rain. Each and every day that it rained, we were shooed back into the house around the table for friendship, for relationship. Imogene's house and her table became a place of literal refuge for us, a place around which uh, relationships grew, place where we could rest, find comfort, a dry place from the rain. You know, I think God is like that a little bit. A God who gathers God's children out of the harsh elements of life, gathering the people that He has called to be a community in out of the danger that the world presents. What a beautiful vision that is of a God who gathers us together in safety, in shelter from the rain. The psalm we read today, Psalm 91, gives us quite a clear picture of this kind of God, a God who is our shelter from the storm, our refuge. The psalmist writes uh, that God is our sure help, our refuge and our fortress the God in whom we place our trust. The psalmist goes on to say that those who put their faith in God, those who call on God's name will not be harmed. They will be shielded from all danger. What a beautiful picture that we have of this kind of God. God who brings us in from things that might harm us. God who keeps us safe. It doesn't take a very long look at the news these days or a, a flip on of the TV to see that we live in a world that needs this kind of God. We are in an unstable world. Maybe not any more than we ever have been, but certainly more, we are more aware of the lack of security that we have. We face things like economic insecurity. We face things like the threat of terrorism and violence. 
We stare in the face of oppression and injustice all over the world, and even in our own country, we see all of these many ways that our world seems to be falling apart. Even in the church, we face declining membership numbers. We face denominational disagreements, strife. The world is an uncertain place. I don't have to tell you this, but it's not the members of the news, it's not the media, it's not politicians or world leaders, it's not even bishops or pastors that will protect us from this uncertainty. It is this God that we hear about in the Psalms today. God in whom we place our trust is the one who carves out a refuge for us. The Hebrew word from which we get the word refuge literally means a place carved out to have shelter from storms or nature or weather. God carves out a place for us to be safe and away from danger. Beautiful picture. The problem is is that you and I all know and have witnessed at some point in our lives those who have called on God's name and have not found that refuge. You've knelt beside those hospital beds. You've prayed those prayers. You've seen people die from illness. You've watched the news. You've seen suffering in places like Syria where young, innocent children face horrors that none of us can possibly imagine. You've seen our own communities torn apart by violence, justice, Racism, oppression, all of the things that tear our communities apart. You've seen these things. These things don't necessarily jive with our reading of Scripture this morning. Those who call on God's name to receive that safety and refuge sometimes are left wanting out in the storm. But before we say that Psalm 1 is wrong, before we say that Uh, the word that God has given to us today is not true. Perhaps God is simply inviting us to a different way of hearing about security. Perhaps God is allowing us to lean into the brokenness of our world so that we might be part of God's redeeming it. God seeks to make all things new, to give security to all people, not just a select few. So perhaps God is inviting us to be that refuge for other people, for those around us. And offering that safety and security for others, we ourselves find a home under God's wing. I've been reading a book lately called Tattoos on the Heart. It's the story of uh, this old white guy, Catholic priest in South Central Los Angeles who God called to be the priest of a Catholic church in the midst of one of the most gang-ridden areas in Los Angeles. This was in the early 80s, and and Father Greg uh, moved in and and began to do ministry with all of these Latino gangs. His nonprofit is called Homeboy Industries, and he invites people who are seeking a way out of gang life and violence on the streets to come and, and receive job training and safety and security and in worship, to receive grace and mercy that the church can offer. Hundreds and hundreds of people have been uh, given a lifeline out of gang violence and a life of of crime and uh, strife through Father Greg's nonprofit and ministry. People have come to to receive jobs and, and come to become productive members of society and then to have families and to get married and all of these Wonderful things. Now, if we were to apply Psalm 91 to Father Greg's story, to all those homies on the street, as he calls them, we might wonder why the situation looks different than the Scripture promises. God provides safety and security, a shield from all that will harm us, and yet Father Greg tells the story of burying over 150 friends that he had come to know and love as a result of violence. He's seen his friends who have come to to know Jesus go back onto the streets to live old lives. He's 
seen hurt and hardship of, of families ripped apart due to death. and He's seen so much tragedy in the midst of so much danger. But as Father Greg tells it, he's not there to have God help him not see bad things happen. Rather, he steps into that darkness. He steps into that violence and all of that danger and seeks to be a way that he might shine God's light, to be a refuge for people who need security and safety, to offer the love of Jesus Christ in a place that might not ever know it otherwise. Perhaps what God offers us is not the promise that bad things will never happen to us, because we know and have experienced bad things ourselves, I'm sure. But perhaps what God promises us through Psalm 91 is that we might be given the hope that God will not abandon us. We might be given the hope that there is a refuge in the midst of all the danger of our world. We might be given the hope to spur us on to step back into the world to offer the love of God. You might remember me talking about Miss Emma Jean and her a son's trailer that we worked on. What's interesting about that, that week for us was that as the rains came each and every day, and we had this place to go to be shooed into the dining room for more cucumbers, for more rest, for more laughter and conversation, as we experienced that day after day, we found ourselves knowing that we had a safe spot to go to. So we began to stay a little longer as the rains came down. It would begin to sprinkle, and rather than loading everything up, we would stay a few more minutes, try to get one more piece of underpinning on, try to fix one more floor joist, try to install one more piece of safety equipment. Because we had that refuge at Mrs. Imogene's table, we were able to push forward into the storm. We were able to push forward knowing that there was a space for us. Friends, perhaps all God offers us this morning is simply the security of knowing that God is always going to be there for us. And in that security, we can then push forward into the world in the midst of all the danger that we face. That we can simply try new things for the purposes of extending God's love to a hurting world. Perhaps God is calling you today to just that. Simply try something new. Maybe it's extending a, a warm smile and a handshake to someone that you really know needs it. Perhaps it's sharing a meal with someone that you know could possibly never pay you back. Perhaps it's inviting a neighbor over into your home and breaking down barriers. Perhaps it's sitting down to coffee with someone with whom you disagree, having some civil fellowship, conversation. Perhaps it's starting that new ministry that's been eating at your heart that God would not leave you alone about. Perhaps it's something as crazy as uh, volunteering to help start a new worship service at your church. Perhaps all God is asking you to do today is try something. Knowing that God has carved out the cleft of that rock under which we find safety from the storm. And knowing that we have that safety leads us back out into all that danger, into all that uncertainty, to all those places where the love of God is needed the most. So try. Because what's the worst that could happen? 